Montgomery Tennis Plex is a world-class tennis facility, and it all came about because of a dream and a dreamer, Jack Shore. to have Murphy Jensen come out and celebrate a day with us here at your tennis community in Montgomery County? Well, for me, it's the greatest. I mean, I've known Murphy since he's 14 years old. So to see how his career has progressed since 14, winning the French doubles and uh, being, being the great player that he's been with his brother and being the great coach that he is now and, and, and being a, you know, one of the great ambassadors, probably one of the top two or three ambassadors for tennis in the world. I, I, you know, and that he's here, it's a wonderful thing. So it's a very personal thing for me. It's fantastic to have one of the best doubles players in the world here. Um, you know, on the court with uh, you know with all with all our students and all our adults, they never get a chance to do that. So it's a fantastic opportunity for them and also for Murphy. Yeah, fantastic opportunity to get to pick a game of the Grand Slam doubles champion, 1993 French Open with his brother Luke. Okay, the guy's a wonderful promoter, a great down to earth guy. And I love it whenever I get to meet him. He's an awesome guy. This is great. It's so wonderful to have such a wonderful. Terrific pro here, just having such dynamic energy. Um, I've met Murphy a few times before today, and every time I have a chance and this wonderful opportunity to be on the court with him, it's always exciting, and we always learn something new from him. Great, professional, and a wonderful promoter for tennis, he and his brother. I always loved watching him growing up, both of them as doubles players. There's a moment everybody's waiting for. Okay. Great, Someone's great waiting. coach, great player, great ambassador to tennis, probably the best in the world. Murphy Jensen, great friend of mine for years and years and years. Love to have him here. He's going to part on you. I want you guys to listen carefully with what Murphy has to say because he, he's been around, he's done it all. He started playing, how old were you when he started playing, Murphy? Uh, about one and a half. One and a half. That's it, right? One and a half? Okay. You started tennis at one and a half? That would have been incredible. In the crib, hitting tennis balls. No, I started tennis when I was maybe three or four. Three or four years old. Some of you started then. Okay. Some of you started a little later. So Murphy's going to tell you the progression and yeah. how to become a great player like him and a great coach and a great human being like him. Here we go. Oh, thanks, Jack. My um, pleasure. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Um, I am Murphy Jensen, coach of the Washington Castles World Team Tennis Team which includes players like Venus Williams, formerly Serena Williams, we coached her as well. On this year's team we've got Venus Williams, we've got Martina Hingis, who at the age of, does anyone know Martina Hingis? Okay, at the age of two she started tennis, at the age of four she won her first tournament, at the age of 14 she won her first Wimbledon doubles title. At the age of 15 she won her first Wimbledon singles title. At the age of 16 she became number one in the world. By the age of 20 she won nine Grand Slam titles before she was 20. Amazing, right? The youngest player in the history of the game to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and she plays for the Washington Castles. We have Leander Paez who after last season's uh, uh, year ended up winning the U.S. Open and beating the Bryan brothers in the semifinals. 
and he plays for our team as well. Um, but my story is probably similar to yours, you know? Who, who loves to play tennis around here? A lot of, a lot of you? Who wants to be uh, high school tennis players? Who wants to be college tennis players? Who wants to be the best tennis players in the history of the world? Pretty cool, right? Who wants to be a great student? Some of you hesitated. To be a great tennis player, you have to be... Well, that too. But to be a great tennis player, you have to be a great student. Not only in the classroom, but on the tennis court. You know, this game belongs to the learners. This game of tennis. The best players in the game, the people that win tournaments, are the ones that are, are learning more than their opponent. They're always looking for a competitive edge. Every sing the, a single day of their tennis life is, is an opportunity to find that competitive edge against their, uh, uh, against their opponents. Um, one of the things that my family tried to do is basically be, become the best we could possibly become. And every day we, we sought to uh, do things better than they've ever been done before. Um, you know, I live a life today where I try to seek, uh, you know, extreme achievement just personally. You know, I want to see how, how much I can give and how much I can do to make uh, this world a little bit better place. And with the Castles, we've won four out of five years the World Team Tennis Championships. We've won three years in a row. We've got uh, the, oh, you don't have to time. Time. We've got the, We have the longest winning streak in the history of all professional sports. And I never thought about winning or losing, and I never talked about those things. I did talk about the culture the Washington Castles tries to create, which is bringing the D.C. community together uh, to share a common interest of tennis. And that's what we've done here. I mean, just an event like t the today, or has anyone been out to the World Team Tennis? Anyone seen any World Team Tennis matches? Who would you see play? I saw you guys play against... Uh... What did you think of the coach? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't impressed with the coach. No, but I say that this world belongs to the learners, but what you learn in the classroom does translate, and how you act in the classroom does translate in how you act on a tennis court. And you can learn uh, how, to, uh, how to be a listener and a learner and, and, and seek, you know, great coaching from Jack or look at your 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 partners in crime here and find out if so, this guy here at the Roger Federer had is the best player in the group I'd watch him all day long and find out what he's doing and typically I find the players that are the best players are the ones that are taking the time to get out there on their own get the get a phone list of the other kids in the group and avoid nobody I believe that the best way to get better at this game is to compete you compete for everything when the coaches say, hey guys, let's get together, don't walk in, run in. Be the first one here, be the first one to the water jug, be the best at getting water, be the best at picking up balls, be the best at serving, be the best at returning, be the absolute best that's ever picked up a tennis racket. Pretty cool, right? That's when life gets interesting. And you'll see when you play in a tournament, that you can tell the best players. You don't need to see their name in red on the draw that know, know they're seated. They come in and they, they come with an air of confidence. Not because of their forehands and backhands, because of their attitude, their effort. It makes a big, big difference when you've got a great attitude and a great effort. I care more about attitude and effort than I do forehands and backhands. Because the, the, wins, and the, the wins are going to come. I guarantee it. And you don't want to play the game that's going to win today. You want to play tomorrow's game. You don't want to play like Roger Federer. You want to play better than Roger Federer. Now that's a goal. Now that's pretty cool. Roger Federer set out to be the best tennis player that ever picked up a tennis racket in the history of the world. He became the Picasso of tennis. Amazing, right? And there's going to be someone under him, you know? Maybe he's not even born yet. That says, going to look at that name Roger Federer and say, Roger who? And hopefully there will, hopefully his name will be Roger. So Roger Dodger. Um, do you have any questions? You know, I grew up in northern Michigan. We didn't have beautiful tennis courts like this. We had what was the weather today in northern Michigan? Northern Michigan was 65 below zero, nine feet of snow. <laughs> On a day like today, I'd get the shovel out and take the snow off the court just so I could hit a few tennis balls. You know, in Russia, the junior tennis program, you see all these beautiful courts and these lines and the windscreens and the tennis balls. Well, in Russia, where there's 46 girls in the top 100, uh, 100 in the world on the WTA tour. 46 came from Russia. And their tennis program for the first two years of their life 
Guess how they practice? For two years. How long have you been playing tennis? Three years? Four years? Uh, yeah. Okay, can you imagine your first, did you get to use tennis balls? Um, well, like, soft compression balls. Okay, well in Russia they don't even use tennis balls for two years. They learn how to hit air swings perfect. They watch video and they hit air swings for two years. They don't have the money to hit with tennis balls. You guys have such an advantage. You got tennis balls. You got coaching. All they had was a dream. And to take, you know, take that dream and make it a reality and to be in the top 100 in the world and make it a reality. Now, you know, uh, just imagine how far you can go. But, uh, you know, focus precedes execution. Typically, I think the biggest thing that where, where players fail is they're not focused. And if they are focused, they're focused on the wrong things. They're more focused on beating the other guy instead of trying to be the best you can possibly be. You focus on your business of putting the serve in the court, right? You know, tennis is a very simple game, but the problem is it's usually played by complicated people. At the end of the day, the game belongs to the pushers. The person that puts one more ball over the net and in the parameters of the court is going to win every single tournament. You know, the Wimbledon or the U.S. Open, Serena looks like, but at the end of the day, Serena's got to put that ball back into the court. No matter how windy it is, her skirt's flying all over the place, she's playing as a rank and very frustrated, she's getting bad calls, all she's thinking about is putting the ball over the net one more time than her opponent. Real simple, right? And um, any other, anything else you got, Jack? I can go all day long. <laughs> but I, I love playing with these guys. Yeah. What, what makes it fun for me is to compete. You know, every time you go out, it's comp not competing against me, it's competing against yourself. Compete for every single ball you hit. Your t-shirts should all read, I never miss. I never miss. If you touch it, you should make it. And the three principles in ten of a four tennis success, number one is consistency. What does that mean? To me, it means showing up for practice every single day. Early. Not late for practice, early for practice, staying late for practice, staying a little bit extra. In my academy, all my kids, I never even have to ask them. They serve, they, I don't have to practice serves during practice because they're gonna serve on their own time. They're gonna grab a bucket and rent a bucket of balls or get a hopper and they're gonna go out there and practice their serves on their own. What are the things that you guys could do on your own to be tennis, better tennis players? Anybody? Practice serves. Practice serves, not a bad idea because it is, Starts the point. It's a very, very, very important uh, shot in the game. Hit the wall. The, the wall, wall never lies. Yeah. The wall is the truth. Has anyone beaten the wall? Does anyone know how to beat the wall in tennis? Drop shots. Drop shots. The wall has bad footwork. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought that. The wall also, you can go over the wall usually. Yeah. This top spin lob over the wall. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Conditioning, those are the things you have control over, right? Conditioning, practicing on your own time, um, the wall is great, the wall, you know, the wall is the best. Victoria Azarenka, when she was, how old are you? Eight? She was eight years old. She holds the world record for hitting on the wall. When she was eight years old, the world record was like 4,300 shots in a row. 4,300 shots without a miss. So she set out to hit 5,000 balls in a row when she was eight years old on the wall. Pretty cool. Now we, we started going back to that consistency thing. Consistency for practice. Consistency for your training. Consistency for, you know, you know. I also say a great homework assignment for the kids, for the coaching staff, is that y'all should, all tournament players here, or aspiring tournament players, I'll give everyone a homework assignment to give to Coach Jack or the coaching staff. And that homework assignment can be, what do you want, the question I ask all of you is, what do you want your opponent to see across the net? All my students, I ask them to give me a one page, two page, make it a hundred pages. But what do you want your opponents to see across the net? They might say, I, wanna, I want my opponent to see a player that's mentally tough. I want my opponent to see someone that never quits and never gives up. I want my opponent to see someone that you know, has the biggest serve in the history of the game. I want my opponent to see someone that tries for everything, doesn't beat himself. Pretty cool, right? Next thing you know, you've got that in your bag. The coaching staff has a copy of that. And you're out there going bananas like John McEnroe throwing your racket over the fence, choking out your partner, your opponent, and you're like, hey, Charlie, come over here. Give me that, give me that homework assignment of yours. Well, it says here that you want to be mentally tough. Well, today's practice really isn't lining up with that attitude, right? 
But that's really important. It's a reminder, and to remember means to join up again. When you join up again and remember what you're doing here is trying to be the best you can possibly be. If you become the best you can be possibly be, you're, you're world class. At the end of the day, that's world class, whether you become a Wimbledon champion or a high school player or whatever. That's as good as it gets. It's the best you can possibly be. That should be the goal, is to see how good you can get and do it absolutely the best and grade yourself, just like in the classroom. Um, any questions? Superstars? I'm just waking up. Nothing? What you want to play a little Challenge yeah. the Murph? Let's do it. Let's do Challenge the okay, Murph. Okay, we'll do a Challenge the Murph. Challenge Coach Murphy. And Challenge Coach Murphy, everyone will get a chance to play a point against me. I'll serve it in. If you win the point, you stay in. We're going to find out who's the best player today. It's going to be uh, uh, Beat Murphy Day or something like that. But I'm going to play a point against everybody. Now, one thing I would like to say is, what are you thinking about when you're playing Coach Murphy? Is he going to serve 100 miles an hour to me? Is he going to be hard to, you know, what am I going to do? I would say the number one thing is don't beat yourself. When we play these points, don't be the player that makes the mistake, okay? Insist on having fun on the tennis court, okay? At the end of the day, you got to have fun. If you're not smiling, enjoying the hard days and the good days, you're not doing this right. You ready to go? You ready to go? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to go?